Hello, everyone, and welcome to another one of the interviews in the series that we have been conducting here. I am Nicholas Wallen, your music director of the Mid-Columbia Symphony, and I'm very happy to be joined uh, for this particular interview by a member of one of the most important foundational prominent sections in the orchestra, the string bass section. I'm very happy to be joined by Morella McGreal. Hello, Morella. Hello, Nick. Uh, so you play the bass, as I said, a prominent and important section in the orchestra. Tell us a little bit about how you ended up playing with the Mid-Columbia Symphony. I was taking bass lessons from Clayton Wick in high school, and he was in the section. And right when I went off to college, that first first concert of the of the fall he called me and he's like I need you come back and I was like okay but for what and he's like oh to play and so I was subbing ever since then so, so let's let's do some shout outs let's do some shout outs where did you go to high school I went to Hanford High School in Richland Hanford High School shout out right there and where did you go to college Eastern Washington Eastern Washington go Eagles that's right all right <laughs> Uh, and so then you started subbing in the orchestra. And when was that? How many seasons has it been? That was the fall of 2005. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 2005. Yeah. Uh, so that was... A while ago. A while ago. <laughs> and then there was a search for the conductors and all that kind of stuff. Did you play on those on those concerts when we when we did the conductor search? Yeah, I played on a couple of them. A couple of them, but maybe not all of them. Not all and, of them. And then now you've been stuck with me for the past 13 years or whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I took a break there in a while in the middle where I was gone for a couple of years. Gone just up in Cheney or gone? Um, when I went to New York to be with my now husband, he's from New York. So I'd been playing and then I took a break from everything in Washington and just moved everything to Brooklyn. Then we came back. And that's that's what we call doing things for love. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're, we're happy that you and Devin are together now and back in the Tri-Cities. Yes. So that you, like can, you can continue to play bass in the Mid-Columbia Symphony. So um, aside from having that, uh, having that wonderful New York City partner, husband, Devin. Uh, what do you do in your spare time when you're not playing the bass, bass and practicing all your excerpts for Mid-Columbia Symphony stuff? I play with a lot of the other local groups. I play with the musical theater group. I play with the master singers when Justin Raffin needs me. Uh, I play with Walla Walla Symphony. And then I do a lot of artwork, like painting and stuff. And that's really, fulfilling to me in a way that music is not. So that's, that's what I do. Yeah, so we should mention your website, your, your where people can look at your art and purchase your art if they want to. Yeah, I'm on Etsy. It's called justforlittles.etsy.com and it's all piggy banks of different kinds. It's, you got monsters and dragons and pigs, all sorts. It's a lot of fun. So have you been just like a creative person, a visual art creative person your whole life? Did you come to that in, in a different sort of way from music? Um, I've always really enjoyed art and drawing and, and whatnot. Uh, I didn't really get into it until college because it was, I was more focused on music through up then. And then when I got to college, I needed something I could do to like occupy my mind and my hands when I couldn't practice anymore because you can only practice so many hours in the day. Yeah. And I would start buying like these little ceramic pieces and painting them. And that was a lot of fun. And then eventually my family and friends were like, stop giving us this stuff. We don't have any more room for it. <laughs> so I had to start selling it. Nice. So, and, and where did the piggy bank idea come from or how did that, how did that evolve? I just found a piggy bank, like a monster piggy bank one day, and it was so cute and people just loved it. Like I bought 12 of them and I painted 12 different ones and they were like, 
oh, this is so great. We love it. Do more. And so I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's for littles. Sorry, one more time. Just for littles. Just for littles. Dot. Yes. Etsy. Dot Etsy. Dot com. Awesome. So uh, people can listen to you play the bass. They can also uh, go on go on that website and get some of the of the visual art that you create too. Do you? Uh, so in addition to playing in a whole bunch of the other orchestras around the Tri Cities, do you teach some now? I'm asking honestly, just as a question. I don't. Really, I had started a little bit before the pandemic and pandemic hit and I was just like, I'm good. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, we have all in our, in all of our different ways dealt with the pandemic in, in, in a oh, whole sure. bunch of, yeah, a whole bunch of uh, ways with lessons over Zoom and Skype and all this kind of stuff. And I also completely appreciate the, you know what? I think we're just going to take a break on this um, yeah. because I know friends who have just said, I'm going to use this for, for some, for some time to recharge all my batteries and this kind of thing. Oh, for sure. Right. Um, it's, it's been a challenge. So we were talking right before this interview started about the fact that we were going to have a 4th of July concert and then right. of course that got canceled. So um you said you were looking forward to it, but uh, what what's the sort of craziest, warmest, or wettest circumstance? What 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 kind of a gig can you picture in your head where you had to play your bass in some really really crazy conditions? A um, couple years ago, we were playing West Side Story with the musical theater, and it was the last performance, and it was in the park, Columbia Park, mm -hmm. and. It just, it was threatening to rain, but not raining. And then it just started deluging and they like threw tents up as fast as they could, but it was still like, it was really touchy. Like, can I have my instrument out? Can I, like, should I, like, what are we doing here? Cause there was no, there's no cover for the musicians. Yeah. Other than an oak tree. Right. And uh, hazard pay is not something that we usually negotiate ahead of time. No, you don't think so. No. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's funny. Uh, I mean, I've certainly had lots of gigs where the wind was so strong that music was blowing off everybody's music stands and things oh, yeah. like this. And I have conducted some 4th of July concerts that have been hot, but certainly nothing. I mean, what, what have the temperatures been like in the Tri-Cities? I think it's cooling off a little now, right? But It's cooling off a little bit now, but it's looking to get hot again, like another 108-ish. 108. That reminds me of the Chicago Cubs. Um, <laughs> it was 108 years between years. 1908 and 2016 when they won the World Series. Uh, for those people watching this interview, Morella and I talk about baseball quite a bit because she is a devoted fan of the Mets. The New York Mets. Um, which is uh, for some Cubs fans, Cubs fans who have been Cubs fans since before I was born, they know that in 1969, the Mets and the Cubs had a big, big uh, rivalry and the Mets uh, came out on top. Um, and that was before I was born, but uh, it does uh, color so my relationship to the Mets franchise. And I mean, more recently in 2015, the Mets, eliminated the Cubs in the postseason. Um, mm -hmm. But Mets, M-E-T-S, is also actually my mother's maiden name. So she wears a New York Mets t-shirt from time to time. Um, and so I can't really say that I, that I absolutely despise the Mets since it is a, a team that my mom supports. I'll have to send her a couple more shirts. That's not absolutely necessary. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, she likes it because it's her name, you know, it's, right. uh, it's her, it's her name. So, uh, but yeah, Morella and I talk about baseball and from time to time, um, Morella will wear a Mets jersey to, to rehearsal, especially when she wants to remind me of some uh, relatively contemporary Mets victories over the Cubs, but it's all in uh, good taste. Um, I hear the Mets are looking at acquiring this really cool third baseman. 
Yes, and uh, <laughs> if you if you give us your entire AAA squad, then we might trade the uh, MVP uh, to mm -hmm. you. Um, but but again, you know, this season it doesn't seem like we really need him. So uh, <laughs> sad, sad but true. Um, so in all of those years, and of course with multiple conductors, I'm curious, and I've been asking everyone in this series about. Uh, concerts that you've played that have been particularly memorable for uh, for any of a number of different reasons. So, uh, what what concerts uh, spring to mind when when I ask you that question? I really like the Doctor Atomic. Mm. It was such a it is such a unique piece and and the obvious connection to the Tri Cities. Right. Um, that was really cool. I really I enjoyed the entire season of this the fifths. Oh yeah, I thought Perfect. that was was great. Um, really, as I, a player, anything that's like romantic and big and heavy, I love that stuff. Yeah. So the Doctor Tomic again, just sort of quickly going back for anybody who who didn't hear that concert, John Adams, contemporary American composer, wrote an opera called Doctor Atomic. It's all about Oppenheimer and the the making of the the first atomic bomb, and. There, you know, there's there's Leslie Groves as a character in the opera, and there's there's a trombone solo, and Don Hammerstrom had to stand up and play the trombone solo, and it was sort of like Leslie Groves giving a giving a speech, uh, and I forget exactly when that was, you know, five six years ago, something probably longer than that at this point. I don't know. I don't remember. It all gets muddled in yeah. my head. And the circle of fifths around that was, same time ago i'm not sure yeah <laughs> but all those things all those things were fun did you have a really like go the, ahead uh, oh i really liked the halloween spectacular too just because it brought such a different audience yeah and they were so engaged and you could see the kids faces like oh my goodness and it was such a different energy that it brought so that was really i really enjoyed that more than i thought i would we we are, I'm not gonna give anything away too much, but we're, we're thinking about bringing that back and doing it again. Um, nice. assuming, assuming that all the protocols move the way that we hope that they do and uh, that we can get a venue um, because all of that stuff is tricky now too, not only because of, of COVID, but also because of construction that's going on right. on various performing arts um, places in the Tri-Cities. Uh, anything else? I mean, those those are great choices. Anything else that pops into your mind? Um, the New World Symphony was really special because that was my first sitting in first chair, but it was also the first like real orchestral piece I played ever when, when I was younger. And so it was kind of a cool tie in personally for me. You know, what's funny is it was one of the very first symphonies that I ever played as a student as well when I was in high school. Oh, yeah. And and it was, I remember it was the very, very first compact disc that I ever owned was a recording <laughs> of the New World Symphony, you know, so that piece has been with me for a while and and certainly has has some special memories. So I'm glad that, that you have some special memories with that piece too. Yeah. Um, Anything else that you want to share with our supporters and subscribers right now? What are your hopes, hopes for the future? Hopes for the future that we can play again soon, that we can play more often, that we can do more collaborative work with our friends in the Tri-Cities and maybe just change up things a little bit and get more people to, to come see us and be a part of it. Yeah, we, we want to get back and we want to be visible and we want to be doing the things that uh, that our community wants to support, you know, right. Um, and we can't we can't wait for that to uh, to be possible and for it to come true and for everybody who's watching this to come on out and to to see Morella in the bass section and to hear her play and to hear the basses supporting everybody <laughs> supporting the entire orchestra and um, we hope that that happens really pretty soon. So uh, thanks to everyone for watching this. Thanks in particular to my guests for, for the interview right now. And that's Marilla. Thanks so much for, for being with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And for everybody else, stay tuned for 
some important announcements. We're hoping to reschedule for some time when it's not quite so hot and so dry and the air conditions aren't quite so cloudy and hazy so that we can play a nice uh, fun Pops concert outside and get everybody out uh, and to, uh, to be able to hear the Mid-Columbia Symphony, play some live symphonic music in the Tri-Cities sometime soon and sometime hopefully uh, still this summer. So uh, until then, thanks everybody for, uh, for watching the interview and we talk to you later.